Hey there. I'm honored to be uh, here to share in a bit of the excitement, um, but I bet you're all wondering just how we got here. Because uh, if you know me, you know I'm no Vectorworks expert. I'm just an everyday uh, corporate audio guy. And the truth be told, I think that's why I'm here. I, I mean, maybe I'm so average that if I can do this, you know, any audio human can. I mean, I'm always trying to learn and grow, and I'm constantly asking questions of people in and around our industry. Uh, about a year ago, I saw a post from L Acoustics touting the ability to export sound vision into Vectorworks. And of course, that's great, but I asked, uh, when would it be possible to go the direction, the other direction? And um, Maxine messaged me. I thought he was just taking pity on me. Uh, he said he wanted to chat about my workflow and see how he could help. I had no idea at the time that he was specifically hired to help with these sort of integrations. And so first off, kudos to L Acoustics and Vectorworks for allocating uh, resources, time, um, and their humans to help us users in this way. Uh, you see, in the touring audio industry, there's always been a pretty large database of arenas and sheds um, already out there. And um, there's a plug-in for another drawing application that, assuming you wanted to draw your room from scratch, you could use that process. Um, but I guess in the world of corporate audio, our workflow is just a bit different. So, you know, what is that? Well, Historically, my workflow generally starts with a design from a technical director in Vectorworks who asked me to do the sound design and layout. And generally, I'm limited to the hang points that are left over from lighting and scenic departments. And um, I try to space my arrays in the drawing based on previous experience with speaker coverages, widths, distances, etc. And, you know, then the hard part starts. I, you know, lastly, do I really want to redraw this whole drawing from scratch? No. Um, I want to get my drawing into sound vision and confirm my predictions or more importantly I want to prove qualitative volume coverage over distance um, to my more discerning clients um, but with sound vision if you're watching this hopefully you know the power of sound vision's prediction abilities and 3d visibility and if so you probably also know how hard it is to draw complex shapes in sound vision um, after all it's sound software not drawing software and if you're like me, the design had an odd shaped stage or columns or delay screens or, you know, other obstacles, you might have just admitted these things in your sound vision prediction. Um, and simplifying your Vectorworks drawing enough to export it into that other drawing application, then import it into sound vision was a pain. Um, drawings would import in the wrong scale, facing the wrong direction, located miles from the XY center point. Um, you know, I couldn't find much information in this process on the internet, so I ended up asking a bunch of friends that were smarter than me how they were completing the process, uh, each kind of giving me a nugget of gold about their way of doing things. So a quick thank you to Ali Morish, Ross Kempe, Rob Durkee, Tobin Seo, and of course, Maxime from Acoustics for teaching me your ways, uh, which brought us here. You know, I made a video for that process. And it's in my YouTube channel if you're interested has some details that can help with the VW transition as well. But we're gonna go into pretty, some pretty good detail here in just a little bit, um, so maybe just stick around. Um, if you're picking the right tool for the right jobs, you know, Vectorworks is really the leader in drawing and visualization, communicating designs for the entertainment industry. Um, I use it daily to clearly communicate interaction of all the different departments on a show site. It's 3D visualization ability is particularly helpful with sight lines. Um, you know, no one wants to be the sound guy who blocks the view of an audience member, uh, um, you know, their ability to see an artist, video screen, or even a scenic element. Um, rigging weights, specific equipment locations, uh, equipment quantities, all that can be calculated with Vectorworks. And if you wanna know speaker coverage areas, data can be entered and associated with each speaker, allowing Vectorworks to show a cone of coverage. Of course, this data can be manipulated to show really just about anything. And just because speakers say the throw distance data is 100 feet doesn't really mean you'll get quality sound over that distance. Um, but by contrast, sound vision gives you an unrivaled look at the overall sound in your room. If you're only hanging a left and right typical concert PA, there are many platforms out there from different manufacturers. But in my humble opinion, um, sound vision is the best out there for looking at large distributed PA systems which is what we do daily in corporate, right? Um, so how the, different speaker like, how the different speaker locations can interact for time alignment, what the volume over distance is, what laps and interactions you can expect, 
and even EQ response are all predictable in sound vision. Our touring audio friends have that database arenas and sheds I mentioned, but in the corporate world of ballrooms and convention centers, we're sort of on our own. So while we do work in a lot of rectangles, we also seem to have a ton of obstructions to deal with and drawing those in found sound vision was always a pain point for me. But the big issue with the old way to export from Vectorworks was that Vectorworks files just had too much detail for sound vision. And I would spend the majority of my time making the drawing easier for sound vision to accept. But ta-da, the new L Acoustics plugin does all that simplification for us. Um, let's take a look. Uh, here's what a typical ballroom show might look like if we were being lazy. Um, this is a file that was actually submitted to me by an SE. And to be fair, I've done plenty of drawings just like this. Here's an example of using the old export to the other drawing back in around the world. This drawing started with a good 3D model from my TD buddy Tobin, so it's pretty easy to get it looking good in sound vision. Uh, but again, this was the old workflow. Here's a reimagining of a room drawn by my TD friend Michael Lee of an immersive trade show for a video game client. And with Vectorworks, I was able to show the client different coverage overlaps in the various sound zones. Um, but the LA plugin made easy work of the export. And now I could show the client a much more detailed prediction of their room. And these were audio designers for a video game. So they were, they cared. They wanted to see what it could do. A funny little side note, chatting with friends about the plugin while it was in development, more than a few said we really had no excuse not to have better sound vision files now. I couldn't agree more. Okay, well let's open this up and see what we can do. Uh, check out how this plugin works. This is the Nashville Convention Center. It's a show I have coming up. Um, I think our first step before we get too far is let's save a copy as something that is not a working file, preferably a Vectorworks drawing. That way we can edit this file for use in sound vision to our heart's content without worrying about messing up a project file or something like that that everybody has to share. That's our first step. Uh, next thing we want to see is um, this drawing was done by my friend Tobin Seo. He's an excellent TD. He does what most TDs do and that is he starts with a drawing from the house. That drawing uh, may not have everything we need. We can see that um, the floor is transparent. We're going to need a floor. Um, there's no walls. We're going to need that as well. The floor we need for our audience listening level, the walls we want to see reflections. It all makes sense, right? So to get us started, the first thing we need to do is make sure that it's oriented the right way. And Tobin's done that for us by having the audience facing the bottom of the page, or south, uh, and the stage facing north, or the top of the page. So when we look at our origin, we can see that it's way down here, and it's probably fine. Um, really no reason not to use it there. Uh, L Acoustics teaches us in the arenas to set our origin in the middle of the, the arena, in the theater to set in the middle of the proscenium arch. But in the corporate world, I like to set it right at the upstage center just because it makes my math easy in moving speakers around. So let's do that. If we go to Tools, Origin, User Origin, Set User Origin on Next Mouse Click. We can then zoom in to the center of the stage and place our origin where it'll make sense for me and hopefully for you as well. Once our origin is set, um, we have to think about what we need in sound vision. Um, like I mentioned, we're definitely gonna want a floor and probably want some walls. I use this polyline tool here to click around the drawing and make a floor that I extrude to an inch or two and then do the same thing, clicking around the drawing to make walls that I'll extrude depending on what the room is, 20 feet, 15 feet, 30 feet, whatever makes sense for that particular room. In the interest of time, I've gone ahead and done that. Here's our floor and here's our walls. Um, at this point, we probably could go ahead and export. Um, the plugin will do all the heavy lifting. 
Looking in here though, we see a lot of 3D objects. These chairs in particular will create a bunch of surfaces that Sound Vision is have, gonna have to do math with. But you know, let's give it a shot. It's pretty easy to go back and forth. So here's our export plugin. We're gonna choose bounding box for all of our symbols. Bounding box is exactly what you think it is. It's a square representing the symbol with the least amount of surfaces possible, as opposed to true geometry, which again is exactly what it sounds like. Millions and millions of faces, a um, little bit too much for sound vision, sound vision to deal with. You could also choose do not export if you knew there were symbols you didn't care about. But since we're putting it to the test, let's try bounding box and click export. We're now gonna then name our file. Let's call this with seats. And that's how long it takes. If we cruise over here to Sound Vision, I've got an empty world opened up. We can import our with seats choice and see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine seconds to import. Not too bad, but you know, I've seen faster. So I'm curious if we got rid of all of these seating elements, just how fast this would be. So let's try that. We'll clear this out. No, we're not gonna save it. And we're gonna go back to Vectorworks. Um, similarly to doing the walls and the floors, you can do a polyline around all of the seating and just extrude it. That'll make a single polygon to draw on versus all of those chairs. And I gotta believe that that's gonna be a lot faster. So we go to L Acoustics, export to Sound Vision. We're gonna choose our bounding box again. We can see a significant drop in the number of faces. Export was quicker, no seats. Export chunked right out of there. Could hardly read what it even said. And now we are going back to Sound Vision. We import our drawing with no seats, one, two, three, four, four seconds. So we cut our time in half. Um, at this point, we are pretty much ready to draw. I could have cleaned this up a lot better, as you can tell. Labeling objects such as walls, floors, etc., as classes will allow you to show, hide, enable, disable, all of that um, in sound vision, as well as making it easy to set a listening level for them. Um, Mike McDermott suggested to me that uh, since it's so fast, he just exports each layer of his Vectorworks file individually. Um, then he imports them one at a time into SoundVision. This way the layers come in as groups and it's easy for him to troubleshoot if a layer is giving him grief. Uh, for me, I just turn off what I don't need to see and leave the layers in SoundVision a bit messy since the plugin will only exp export whatever is visible. Uh, again, the export's so quick, it's easy to do over and over your sound vision looks the way you want it. Let's take our audience listening level and bring it up to something usable, say three feet. And we can see the extrusion happen here. Now we have something that we can apply our speakers to. Um, in the interest of time, I've already done that. So let's open up our example. So here is a little more finished drawing with speakers in place. As you can tell, um, we're shooting across the audience level that I chose. Um, we've got a good representation of everything in the room. We can see us slamming into the back of the front of house drape. We can see that we are missing the delay screen. Just great. And just for fun, let's go to our view from source. Oh boy, I got some work to do. Um, I'm banging into some light fixtures and the truss, and that's going to be a problem. But imagine if we didn't draw those light fixtures or those truss, I would have never known until I got there that I had some issues. That's the beauty of this. We are doing a prediction, um, and I'm sure you guys all recognize the power here. Um, I hope this helps, and I think we are at that point, if we still have some time left, we can ask some questions. Roast me. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me how dumb I am. Tell me how to do it better. It's the main reason I came here. I was hoping to learn some things from all you guys that are smarter than me. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. But in all sincerity, I hope this helped.